Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to help the channel grow and keep up to date with our latest videos. Welcome to another video by me, Flojo. Today we're going to be looking at Power Automate Desktop Actions and we're going to be looking at how to create and modify a table using the set variable action. So, using the set variable action, if you don't know how to use the set variable action, there is a video on my YouTube channel, so be sure to check that out first. However, if you do understand how to use this, we are going to use this to create a table. Now to create a table, you use the percent, then the curly bracket, and then you use an up arrow, then you use a square bracket, then you use quotation marks to use column name, and then you close out the quotation marks and the square bracket. Then you do a comma, and then you do a square, and then you do a quotation mark, then the value, and then you close out that with a quotation mark and a square bracket, and then you close that with a curly bracket and a percent sign. So that sounds very complicated, but let's take a look at an example of it. So this is an example using an employee ID and a name column. So as you can see here, we've got the percent, the curly bracket, the up arrow, the square, and then we've got the employee ID and name separated by a comma using quotation marks around each of them. So this is how you identify the columns that you're going to be creating is the up arrow before the initial square bracket. Then we have a comma. Then we open the square brackets again because we're passing in data in an array. And we're essentially going to be passing in one, two, three, four, five as the employee ID comma and then passing in Flojo as the name. So how do these link up then? Well, firstly, we've got the employee ID and that represents the first in the value column. So we've got the column name and then we've got the value. So it goes one to one. Then we're moving on to name and we've got Flojo. So the second column, which is name, is the second value in the square bracket. So that's how you would create a table. How would we then update it or add data to it? Well, once you've created that using the set variable, you would have created a variable name to create your table to be linked to. So what we'll do then is we'll reference that variable name in another set value. So then in that set variable, we're going to set the value of the variable name plus and then we're going to simply open the square brackets up and pass the value information in. So in this instance, we'd pass in six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and then comma, and then we'll pass Jack's in. So what that would do then is we'd have one row of one, two, three, four, five flow Joe. And by using this set variable and referencing the variable name and doing the plus with the square brackets, we would simply be adding another row of six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and then Jack's. So let's take a look at what the set variable looks like then. So as you can see, we've got the set variable visualization on the screen. And then we've got an example here. Now we've got the percent sign, the curly brackets, and then we've got the up arrow and the square brackets. So we're starting to build our columns here. We've got an employee ID. We've got a name. We've got a city. We've got a country and we've got a salary. Then we're going to close off that with the square bracket, do a comma, open another square bracket and create a value. So this will be our row one. This will be our first entry into our table. So then we're going to use one, two, three, four, five to reference the employee ID. Then we'll use Flojo to reference the name, Vancouver to reference the city, Canada to reference the country, as well as 5,000 to reference the salary. So as you can see at the top, we've got the set and we've created custom table example. So this will be our table name and will essentially be the variable name. And in here, in this two section, this is where we are setting the key and value object content. Now we looked at how we update or add items to a table then. So what does that look like? 
Well, if we created another set variable, we would use the same table name because we're going to be overwriting the table by adding data to it. Then we would simply reference the custom table example in our uh, to section where we've got the percent sign, custom table example percent sign. And then to add information, we would simply do the plus before the percent sign ends. So we've now done a space plus, then opened up a square bracket and passed information in. Now, if you remember, we had employee ID, name, city, country, and salary. So what we're simply doing is passing in the values for each of those columns. So in this instance, we're passing six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Jack's for the name, Vancouver for the city, Canada for country, and 9,000 for the salary. So that is how you can then update or add rows to a table. Let's actually look at a live example then on Power Automate Desktop. Okay, so I'm on Power Automate Desktop and I've got the variable section open. I'm just going to drag set variable over. I'm going to firstly change the name to, um, I'll change that to custom table example just to keep consistent with what we've seen so far. And then I'm going to create my table. So if you remember, we used the percent sign, the curly brackets, and then I'm going to put a space, curly brackets, and percent sign. So that's going to be our um, initial creation. But what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do an up arrow, a square bracket, then I'm going to do a single quotation mark and write employer, employee, sorry, ID. And then I'm going to do a comma, then do another column for name, and then quote, close that quotation mark out, do another uh, comma, and then do another quotation mark. I'll just add two there so that I don't forget it, and I'll add city. So then you can see there I've got employee ID, uh, name, and city. So if I add a square bracket there, that's going to be the end of our columns. Then I'll add a comma, I'll add a square bracket, do another single quotation mark, and then I'm just going to add an initial employee ID of one, two, three, four, five, a quotation mark again. So this one here, this first value is referencing the employee ID column. So it's one column, two column, three column, one column value, two column value, three column value. So I'll have to do um, a comma again. Then in the name, I'm going to write Flojo, comma, and then in the city, I'm going to write Vancouver. Okay, so I've got my initial columns being created, which is employee ID, name, and city. And then I've got um, row value being added of one, two, three, four, five to go to the employee ID. Um, Flojo to go to the name and Vancouver to go to the city. So this is our table created. So if we hit save, you can see I've got an error. And that is because I have missed the final square bracket. So if I press save now, you can see that I've now got no errors. I've got a custom table example and I've got this information uh, being created to create our table. So if I hit run, We'll then look over on the right hand side at the flow variables to see what data we actually have in our table. So you can see there it says one row and three columns. We're expecting three columns to be employee ID, name and city. We're expecting a row of data of one, two, three, four, five, Flojo and Vancouver for in each of these columns. So if we open this, you can see I've got my one, two, three, four, five under employee ID, Flojo under name and Vancouver under city. So we've got that. Now let's say we want to add another row to this. Well, we can just add another set variable. We can then reference the um, same variable that we've already created. So let's do custom table example. So we've got our custom table example because we're going to be modifying the current variable we're going to be saving over the top of it essentially, but we need to 
pull the data that it currently has. So to do this, we do percent sign, custom, oops, custom table example, and then we'll do a percent sign. Now you can choose to do this by clicking on here and simply selecting the variable and pressing select and it will add it for you so you don't have to go through the process of typing it out but I wanted to do so just to show you uh, what I was actually doing. Um, so we've now got our reference to our variable. Now if we run this essentially we would just overwrite the variable with the same data so we will just get exactly the same data. But if we do a space before the end percent sign and do plus and then open up another square bracket section and then we'll simply add two quotation marks and we'll write 67890 and then we'll do comma because we've just added the employee ID so we'll add another name so let's use Jack's my cat and then we'll do comma and add another one for the city. And obviously he is in the same city as I am in. So essentially what we've got is we've got a self-reference to the initial variable. So we've got all of the data from the initial variable. We're using the plus sign to say we want to add another row. And then essentially we're put passing the data for each of those rows. We're saying, okay, I want to add 67890 to employee ID, Jax to name, and Vancouver to city. So if I press save, what I'll do is I'll put a, um, a breakpoint here and I'll press run. And what that will do then is it will run this first section. And if I open up this table, you can see that we've created the table. We've got our employee ID, name, and city, and we've got the initial um, data that we've put in. But if I then do run next action, you can see now it says two rows, three columns. So what we've got now is we've got the extra additional row that we've just added. And that's an easy way to essentially create a table and then add additional data to it on Power Automate Desktop. Thanks for watching another video by me, Flo Joe. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button or select a video on your screen right now to continue learning more about the Power Platform.